Hi, this is Mr. Manley. This is going to be a short video on partial fraction decomposition. It's by no means all-inclusive or exhaustive. I'm uh, presuming that you have some basic understanding of the concept it, that is involved and in, in what we're trying to do with this. And I just want to look at a few examples of, um, of these and hope that what you see here you'd be able to work with these in combination to uh, address a variety of situations that could come up. So starting with the friend, one thing about all of these is I've already factored the denominator for all of these and that's the first thing that you need to do with the partial fraction decomposition. Once the denominator is factored then I'm going to give a term for each uh, factor of the denominator. So in this case I've got one, uh, two factors. Now that, and this can be a little bit ambiguous because here on the second one, if I look at that, I've got, uh, I've got this one factor that is being squared. And I'm actually going to consider that two factors. So I'm going to go a factor and a factor. And then I guess I'll just go ahead and continue to the third one here. And this is going to have one factor, and then this repeated factor is going to count two. So that's going to give me uh, three factors. And so I'm going to set up three terms, one for each of those three factors in the, in the way that I counted it. And then each of these uh, terms takes one of the factors as its denominator. So there uh, I take the x, there I take the x plus 7. And then on this other one, I'm going to take uh, the x plus 3. And then I'm not going to just take another x plus 3. So you might say, well, there's an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 there. But the way that we have to take this in order for the decomposition to work out right or correctly is like this, x plus 3 and then an x plus 3 squared. And then for uh, uh, the third one here, so I'm going to go x plus 2. And then hopefully, if you saw what I just did on that second one, you can project ahead and see what I'm going to do for this third one. I'm going to go x squared minus 5, and then I'm going to go x squared minus 5 squared, like that. Okay? Um, now we need to go to the numerator. And for the numerator, we are going to uh, give a variable for each numerator. So I'm going to get an A or B, and that's what I'm going to solve for here. And then for this one, I'm going to go A, and I'm going to go uh, B, like that. And then for the third one, I'm going to go A. Now, this becomes a little bit tricky here. Uh, here I've got, so I've got this, this is a quadratic um, denominator here. This is a quadratic denominator, too, if we think about it. But, uh, but it's a quadratic denominator from a linear factor. So I'm just going to treat that as a linear factor. But here where we have this uh, quadratic factor, we're not just going to put uh, a b here. We're not just going to go b. We're going to have to go bx plus c. So with this, when we have this uh, quadratic factor like this, we need a, a linear uh, numerator, a, a kind of mx, mx plus b numerator goes with this quadratic factor. And again, that's uh, you might you could make an argument. Well, well, this is quadratic, and you would be right. But the the way that it is quadratic is as a as a repeated linear factor. Um, so I'm just going to give it. I'm just going to give it a b. I don't need to give it bx plus c. And then finally, when we come to this uh, last uh, numerator here, so that's also going to get a linear factor uh, dx. Find that uh, dx plus e. And then from here, I would I would be solving for all these. And I'm not going to go through the whole solution. I'll, I will just look at the next step. In the next step, we're going to multiply through by the denominator by the uh, yeah by the denominator on the original uh, for the original expression and then that's going to set us up with an with an equation where we can solve for a we can solve for a and b 
And there's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, you can look in a text. Uh, if you have uh, your pre-calculus text, uh, there's certainly places to look online uh, where you can look at this solution uh, for that as well. And there's a couple of different methods for doing that, um, whichever, whichever method you prefer, or sometimes one method lends itself, one, one method is easier to use than another depending on the circumstances. So that's just a brief, in, uh, brief discussion of uh, some of the uh, approaches to partial fraction decomposition. And like I said, hopefully you can sit and analyze these and see the different ways that you can uh, combine them in order to uh, execute the partial fraction decomposition no matter what you're given.